Hey there, welcome to the season 2 of Stories of Modern Work podcast where I discuss and learn from Office 365 users, consultants and IT pros on how they use Office 365 as a modern work platform. My name is Jag Kakarlapuri and I am the founder of Modern Work Group where we help businesses boost Office 365 user adoption through customized user training and business application development, predominantly using Office 365 out of the box features and the Power Platform. You can check out our website for more details at modernwork.cloud. It's M. So uh, let's get into the episode where we chat about Office 365 and remote work with Chandra Ramanathan. Urvasi, Urvasi. Take it easy, Urvasi, Usulaga, Ulluvunte, take it easy, Ooh. I don't know, man. That's that's about, I I, I remember the lyrics. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, were you confused why this guy started singing a, a uh, an Indian Telugu song? That's because we've got uh, the fan number one of A.R. Rahman with us today. Chanda, welcome to the show. Welcome, hey, I should thanks, say, welcome Jack. to the... Good, good thing. <laughs> Uh, that's that's Chenda who got me uh, to sing A.R. Rahman's song. Um, so for those of you who don't know A.R. Rahman, he's the, the one of the best musicians uh, uh, from Bollywood. And he's very well known uh, throughout the world as well. And uh, he's an Oscar winner too. I think it's better if I leave to Chenda to talk about A.R. Rahman than myself, because Chenda is the fan number one. All right, Chenda, take it away. Uh, thanks, Jack. Um, well, very good singing. Thanks for accepting my request to start off the podcast by singing one, singing one of his songs. Um, well, I mean, yes, I was in the media uh, last year, big time all over the world um, when I had dedicated my um, registration plate on my brand new car saying I love ARR, uh, that was just a small gesture from my end uh, to show my respect and a little tribute to the maestro because I have always grown uh, listening to his music and uh, um, that's the least I could do. And yeah, that went in the news big time and uh, all of a sudden uh, overnight, it was probably, I should I say, it was my claim to fame moment. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've been very fortunate to have been uh, invited by the maestro himself uh, for some of his concerts. And I was recently in India too for his concert and I I had some very good personal time with him and uh, he's a legend for a reason. So anyway, yeah. so you may have noticed uh, in the background, so this is the portrait of my car with that registration plate. I don't know if you can see my registration plate. It says I love ARR and that's the maestro himself. And the 99 here is one of his uh, upcoming movies, which is going to be out really soon, as in after the virus and everything. Anyway. Um, Excellent. Well, man. yes. Actually, uh, you're being very conservative there, uh, Chanda. I have to tell you guys, Chanda has actually gone viral. Uh, the uh, when he shared uh, his his photo of the BMW uh, on on Twitter, it's gone viral. It, it's it's gone viral not in, uh, just in Australia. It's gone viral in India. You know, going viral in India is is a very big thing. You know, we're talking in millions of hits. And 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 uh, the uh, you know A. R. Rahman himself recognizing that and getting in touch is a, is a great gesture from uh, from uh, from him as well. I was talking about this to Chandra before uh, pre-show, and you know it's amazing to see how you can actually mix two passions together. You know, Chandra, you did share to me a long time ago about you know you you've been waiting for your BMW Z4 for a long time, and you've got that. Right. That's that's what that you're very quite. Uh, attached to that and now you're bringing the music to go with it it's amazing when you how you could actually club two of your uh, passions together man uh actually uh, that there's a bit of a story behind that too so i always wanted to get a bmw z4 for myself it was going backwards a couple of years ago i think it was about three four years ago when i had made up my mind that I'm going to get a BMW Z4. So I walked into BMW and then uh, probably, uh, I don't know, it must have been the timing. 
the day I walked in, that was early in the morning when when BMW announced that they're not going to product uh, produce uh, or manufacture BZ4s anymore. And then that came as a bombshell to me. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? And the BMW guy said, no, you can always buy the current one. I said, no, I don't want to buy something which is not going to be manufactured tomorrow. I want the latest and greatest. So I said, you know what? I will settle down with a BMW, but not the Z4. And I'll wait patiently until whenever that happens. So I went in for a two series uh, convertible then. And then I decided, okay, fine. Um, that's not the car I wanted, but I'll live with that for some time. And I had this Rego plate. Uh, on that car saying Chanda, my own name. Well, I mean, I felt a bit, it felt a bit selfish there having my own name on my car and I didn't want, I didn't quite like it, but I just decided to live with that. So then came say sometime in 2018 is when there was a media release from BMW saying they are going to be releasing Z4 like in the coming years or something like that. And then I walked into BMW the right next day saying, here's my deposit. Whenever the car comes, I want to be the first one to get it. And then that actually worked very well. Last year, around the month of March or April is when I got a call from BMW saying, uh, the Z4 is coming out. It's coming out in May. And you are the first one in the entire country to be getting it. And yes, boom. So I was wondering, OK, What's my Rego plate going to be? Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, and obviously, no surprises. AR Rahman's music was playing in the background. I said, you know what? I have found what my Rego plate is going to be. It's going to be I love ARR. And then boom, I got the car. Um, uh, BMW actually used my car for their campaigning for a couple of days. Uh, so it was very, very popular in the BMW thing as well. Um, yeah. And uh, they were all over the moon with whatever happened later with things going viral and the maestro himself uh, acknowledging that on right, not only on Twitter, on Instagram and uh, thousands and thousands of ARM and fans adding me as friends on Facebook. It just went nuts. Even now, early this morning, I keep getting friend requests from random people. They just want to connect with me. They yeah. feel that yeah. there's this one guy who is very well connected to the maestro so we should connect to this guy <laughs> yeah 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 you know what? i think that's all fan community right so it's it's uh, you know it, it's it's the community i think uh, great story by the way and we'll talk about communities in a second and talking about stories so you might you guys may be wondering why this guy is talking about ar rahman and, and bmws when you thought this um, is actually a tech podcast so we want to keep things uh, you know fun you know, with all the stuff going on, going around uh, at the moment, so there's a bit of you know banter. Is not it's it's not gonna uh, cause any 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 uh, you know grievance or stuff, right? So let's get on with the actual uh, stories of Modern Work podcast itself. Chanda, once again, welcome on the show, buddy. And I want right. I want you to take it away by introducing yourself. Tell us like you know what you do. Um, and you know where you know how you know tell me about yourself like you know sure uh thank you for that uh my name is chanda um i work for a company called sxiq um and i work in the digital team so we have a practice called intelligent workplace and i lead that practice so we are a great um, how should I say, an amazing team uh, because I just love the people that I work with and also uh, not just my team, but the entire company, the people are just, just amazing. That's what makes me uh, keep my energy levels right at the top and I'm always excited when I walk into work. I, I, I always look forward to going into work and the kind of work that we do, um, of course, uh, we do a lot of stuff especially my team from our practice perspective, we focus more on Office 365. We build uh, modern intranets. Um, we have a number of partners that help us uh, do what we do as well, like live tiles. We also work with AirPoint and Nintex. Uh, we are helping a lot of organizations as we speak in terms of automating some of their business processes. And we have rolled out a number of intranets for a number of our clients and they absolutely love it. Um, and yes, I mean, thanks to you as well for coming in and helping us with a number of projects and which has gone sure. really, really well. And I'm sure we can uh, share some of the amazing experiences that we have had 
to get to the outcomes that we were able to give to the clients. Yes. Um, and then, yes, uh, we were also into uh, building bots and things like that. And uh, yes, it's 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 fun. Yes, cool, man. If I cool. Have to Excellent. Up, I, 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 I'm, I'm a great fan of your work, I, I should say, um, uh, you know, especially the intranet. I'm going to be before this. So. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, <laughs> sorry, what is it? known you for a long time <laughs> <laughs> so you, you said uh, you know intelligent workplace right um, can can you explain what what do you mean by intelligent workplace thing is, I, I mean, know you guys are all uh, intelligent and uh, and it's been led by <laughs> intelligent guy uh, <laughs> but what is an intelligent workplace the thing is i mean uh, Basically, it's more from uh, user experience driven, right? The thing is, I mean, uh, in the past, we have all seen great versions of internet that's great in double quotes where internet basically has never ever worked. Um, I come from a number of organizations in the past where uh, internet projects have been uh, kicked off, then put on hold, kicked off, put on hold for nearly eight times for one of the organizations that I worked for in the past. And then after that, it goes live. People don't like it. It's not really doing what they want, want it to do. And it's not really serving the purpose. So, but our approach wanted, of course, was going to be different the, uh, than a conventional approach to build an intranet as an example. So it all comes down to uh, the user experience. It, everything is user experience driven. Um, if I was an end user, I log on to my internet. It basically needs to tell me uh, the things that I should know. As an example, these are the list of um, approvals. As a manager, I need to approve the leave requests or the things that need I need to approve from a business process perspective. Could be the finance, budgeting, or anything. And also, it gives me stuff which is relevant to me, as opposed yeah. to me having to see stale stuff up on the internet. I just keep mentioning internet, which is just not all about internet, but it's beyond the internet is what we do. Uh, yeah. That goes down to automating. I, I think that's why we're calling locally. it as. Uh, that's why we're not calling it as intelligent internet, but more so as a a workplace. Yeah. Beyond internet, yes. yes, and it's of course predominantly it's uh, Office three six five driven, and uh, um, yeah, it's it's cool stuff. Excellent, man. Excellent. The personalization and the AI capabilities built around personalization is something that Office 365 is going forward with. And uh, as we're seeing a lot of uh, good innovations coming through that, uh, especially also uh, bringing in bots, like even the power agent, uh, the virtual agents into mix as well. It just you know, makes yeah. it easier for us to deploy. The, thanks for sharing that story about that, you know, the intranet project where it kick started eight times and then we actually haven't produced a good enough result or the customer started, I think the customers are moved on from, from the actual vision when we even started beforehand. Um, so now with all these in intelligent capabilities, with all these out of the box capabilities, also with some of the intranet in the box type implementation, people, what I'm seeing is it's quite easier. It's quite easy. It takes less time for actually go to market, go to users quite quickly and learn from what they need and then start to iterate on, on that. You're seeing that as well? Uh, well, I mean, I wanted to add on to what you just mentioned in terms of being able to uh, design and develop and deploy internets quickly. Yes, uh, internet in a box. Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, I can very well remember uh, we built one of our internets for one of our clients where we had a very tight deadline. We only had like three weeks or or even less than that. Um, so the design, uh, build, deployment, and then uh, training and enablement and for the champion users and things like that, everything happened within that time frame, and we were able to achieve it. And of course, um, uh, things like internet in a box, things like that, yes, definitely helps. And uh, I have to mention uh, thank you to one of our partners, Lifetiles, who were uh, really, really forthcoming to help us out with that project when uh, we had a very tight deadline and we worked closely with them. And uh, yes, uh, so it was just at the, that was just the beginning. And what followed on after that is just magic. 
yeah yeah even even our recent experience like both of us worked on a project for a a, a large council here in melbourne victoria right and we've actually built the whole the core of the intranet in in eight days essentially yes there's a bit of planning up front like you know few days a week of planning but the actual build part itself is just like eight days and in that eight days, we just not built the stuff, but we also empowered the users, the the actual uh, internet managers, the power users, and the general users as well, to go on and and be part of the journey of the build process itself. So we built the core, we gave it to them. They started, you know, adding bells and whistles and 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 go live with it. So that's I think it's 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 called democratization of of uh, building uh, application development. What do you think? of course I, I i like the term that you used it's uh it's i think it definitely fits in well there because organizations uh they would they would like to be part of the journey gone all those days where uh you run those requirement workshops in the past where you, and then you vanish for a few months and then you build something and then give it to them and they actually in most cases don't like what they actually see but here it's a different story altogether we are not doing this uh conventional process of uh, following those uh, methods that we used to do in the past. I, I, the way we approach it, or I'm sure a lot of others are doing the same, is uh, working with the customer on the journey. And I did, I feel that the customers, at least the ones that I work with, really like that little personal touch. Yeah. And uh, you, you obviously need to put this human element first, and then you work with them. And, and what you see at the end is, just magic because they love what they see. Uh, we have loved the entire process of working with them and being able to give them back uh, something that's actually useful to them as opposed to just another tool just got yep. rolled out and it's sitting there and gaining dust. I don't believe in that. That's right. Absolutely, man. Uh, and also having that involving the customers during the journey also gives a lot of visibility and helps from a project management perspective as well. Yeah. Excellent. So I yeah, think we've gone on a sidetrack a bit talking about intranets and things. But my main aim for this uh, episode of the Stories of Modern Work podcast is to talk about remote work. You know, we've, we're, we're, we're quite living in an uncertain time at the moment with all the coronavirus. Um, so how are you coping up, by the way? Um, it is it is very, very interesting times. It's all over the world. Uh, we don't have op- we don't have any other option but to stay indoors, which is a good thing. I mean, look, as long as we don't spread this virus, at least you and I, uh, as an example, would not want to be the persons uh, infecting others, regardless of whether we get it or not, touch or we don't. But it, it is very safe to be indoors, number one. And me being an absolute health freak who is generally mostly outdoors, either running and playing tennis, going for yoga. Of course, everything is shut now. Now, in terms of how we are coping up, I will talk to you about how I am co- coping up with that to start with and then talk to you about how my peers are also coping up with that. Now, this came as a big blow. Uh, obviously, this is not something easy for me personally because I'm always an outdoorsy person. I always look for reasons to be out of the house as opposed to being indoors. Um, well, the thing is, I have cut down on my all my fitness activities as in outdoor ones. Um, how in terms of how I'm able to keep my fitness fitness levels up and running, of course, I watch what I eat. Number one. Uh, second thing is, I try to keep myself motivated at all times as much as possible. I obviously do meditation. Uh, at least once or twice a day, which really helps. I highly, highly recommend that. Um, thirdly, yes, I have managed to convert one of my, uh, I've got a guest lounge at home, which I managed to convert it into a gym. So I've got a treadmill, a bike on its trainer and a yoga mat and uh, anything that can make me feel happy in terms of my fitness world. Yes, uh, those things are really helping me. And uh, of course, it, I am missing out on the fact that I'm not being able to go out. It's not a 100% lockdown, but still, I just want to do the right thing. And I don't want to uh, just go out and then be the carrier for something. So I just want to be really safe. Now, in terms of how, um, how, it's, how the remote work option is, actually working for us um in the past i've always 
had the opportunity uh, to work from home uh, in our company at SXIQ. We have we've been very flexible, uh, definitely can work from home as and when you like and things like that, as long as, of course, of course you inform your colleagues and your managers. Um, so actually, uh, even before the enforcement came through, uh, I think a week before that, um, our uh, colleagues uh, were very proactive. So we decided to work from home in a 50-50 fashion where 50% of the people are in the office as if they are required and the other half are actually working from home. So uh, we kind of started off with that journey. And then, of course, since the start of this week, from Monday, it's 100% work from home. Um, we, as a team, so we have regular catch-ups. I highly recommend this. So the thing is, uh, while we are at work in on a normal day, we definitely go out for coffees and things like that with our colleagues. We are going to be missing out on that. So now we do virtual coffees and uh, Microsoft Teams is an absolute blessing. We have always been using Teams for a quite, quite a long time. And we're also uh, helping our customers uh, use Teams lot more than they used to in the past and then also helping customers who have never used teams before in terms of their yeah, adoption using and the stuff. teams now using the, the teams, is, uh, you, you know using the teams the right way to, to get maximum productivity out of it yep so yeah i mean we uh we do our virtual coffees we we do it almost every day in the morning so we guys in our team we hold our coffee mugs yeah i don't have my coffee mug it's my sink now <laughs> uh but Good. I just reminded you to have your last sip. Yes, of coffee. yes, yes. <laughs> um, so we actually have sip of coffees, respective coffees, of course, virtually. We have this 15 minute catch up in the mornings where we just talk about general stuff. We don't talk about work at all because that was that's not the whole point of the call at all. And we do have our regular check ins uh, around midday ish most days where we basically talk about the stuff that we are working on and if there are any challenges which is blocking us and then uh, in terms of uh, certain areas where uh, we probably could get someone else's help from others in the team, things like that. Yes, so Teams is an absolute blessing in disguise, at least for us in this yeah. current situation. And I'm sure you can relate to it and a lot of, of the course, organizations yeah, yeah. can relate to it. So for me, for example, uh, you know, uh, you know, since I've started Modern Work, we are actually a small team, uh, like a startup, you would say, and we've always been remote and cloud first. So I've always been working. You can, you know, have this studio at home. I also work from, um, you know, a co-working space as well uh, that I go into the city, into my, into city to, you know, to be away from home and and you know mingle in the in in the community and and meet clients and so on as well. So. I'm actually missing that part at the moment, so I'm predominantly working from home. Um, but with all these tools that we have, you know, the Microsoft Teams and few other Office 365 tools, it is actually supporting me to be more productive and all that stuff. So before talking about the productivity stuff itself, uh, you've mentioned about that virtual coffees and things, right? So. Uh, I'm actually see. I do work with other partners like yourself, and we're seeing everybody doing something of that nature. And recently, I've, I've read an article um, called, uh, you, you know, distance socializing. You know, it's not social uh -huh. distancing. It's not about keeping people away like 1.5 meters or 2 meters, depending on where you actually live. Uh, it's, it's about, you know, while working remotely, how can you be more social? You know, uh, that's called distance socializing. Um, so... Um, previously, we used to do like, you know, uh, pen polls and we used to write letters back and forth. But now we have all the technology in the world uh, at our fingertips, literally, to actually be, yeah. uh, you know, have that face to face meetings like what we're doing now, uh, you know, using Teams to, you know, record this podcast session, be on 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 camera you know, have that face to face interaction all by it. it's 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 virtual, of course. Right. So I've been reading this book, you know, I've, I've, uh, as, as I it's called Remote uh, Office Not Required by uh, 37 okay. Signals. Uh, they, they are the founders of uh, the company called Basecamp. I'll, I'll share a link to this book. Uh, it's it's got real. Uh, it's come out real uh, many years ago from now. And uh, I'm, I'm actually rereading the book. Uh, it's got real uh, good uh, principles on how to work remotely. You know, uh, we can definitely borrow something from that. So when I read that book and also there's other book called Four Hour Work Week as well. Uh, when I read those two books, 
that actually triggered me from to actually go and build this company called Modern Work Group. Uh, you know, to to support other people on 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 their modern work journey and and things, right? So I think you know, with all this stuff going on, if the silver lining is, you'll actually see more more and more companies supporting remote work. So and having indeed, said that, I, I uh, think it might become the new norm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so with that said, uh, with respect to Microsoft Teams, uh, how do you how do you use? You know, can you just give me like a day in life scenario of using Microsoft Teams and being productive, working from home, and all that? Look, um, all our meetings are now virtual, right? They are all via Microsoft Teams, and I uh, have we usually have in-person meetings with some of our clients on a weekly basis. Now that's all become remote now and we use Microsoft Teams and we definitely have in most of the meetings have the video on. Uh, that that makes a difference uh, as opposed to just talking to a blank screen and it makes a huge difference when you actually see the other person, be it even via the camera, it makes a huge yep. difference. Um, I use Teams predominantly and so are my colleagues as well. I don't think we could live without Teams anymore. Look, I'm sounding like a Teams fan now. I should change my t-shirt from Teams to, uh, sorry, SharePoint to SharePoint. Teams. <laughs> no, man, we're SharePoint at heart all the time. You know, we've been doing SharePoint for yeah, yeah. 15 I, odd I, years I, now. I, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Uh, no, sorry, I digress. Coming back to your question. Uh, yes, uh, day in my life. Um, in the current scenario with everything that's going on, obviously we kickstart our day with the virtual coffee. And uh, yes, and I, mostly I have meetings lined up back to back and they're all on Teams again. And of course, uh, all my clients, um, some of them, it's a new thing for them because most they were all, some of them were are all used to working in the office at all times. And now Teams is a, a massive shift in their uh, working routine. So also helping them do what they can, what they should be doing, what they would have otherwise done physically in the office via Teams, guiding them through has also been a very good experience for me. Uh, in fact, um, I, I was on uh, a call with one of my uh, clients who does not have Teams yet, but they, they are in the process of getting that rolled out. And then one of the questions I got, I got asked was what does one do in the absence of teams? Which was a very interesting question. Of course, I don't I don't want to get into that topic right now. But these are the type of things I get to hear when I speak to some of our clients. And of course, I do use Planner. I do use OneNote big time. And I also have other note apps as well, which I use. I also use Wonderlist, uh, which has been my uh, favorite uh, to do task list for a long, long time. And um, Interestingly enough, uh, I don't know why it took this long. Since yesterday, I have kind of started to become a little fan of Microsoft Whiteboard. Do you use Whiteboard at all? Yeah, yeah, man, I do. Uh, that's actually a good point, right? Uh, not many people are aware of the Whiteboard functionality. It's been quite yeah. uh, widely used in the education space. Oh, okay. But yes. this week, uh, I've conducted two workshops uh, online. Complete. They were supposed to be on, uh, on site uh, in Adelaide. Um, uh, and have supposed to go out there, but now we we all closed our borders for each other, right? So I can't go now, and we're in lockdown. So I've conducted two remote workshops, like you know, three-hour workshops each on Monday and Tuesday, and we've actually used whiteboard. So what I've done, I've actually prepared the whiteboard beforehand with all the agenda items, you know, the sticky notes, all the drawings. Right. Even yeah. I've done a, a sort of like a process mapping diagram. So we were actually working on. Yeah. Um, a, a process map for you know some a document up publishing workflow and we were able to draw mm -hmm. on the whiteboard and it actually helps you be more interactive on that virtual uh, uh, meeting rather than watching powerpoint slides or you know watching me present all the time <laughs> yeah yeah very good uh, i i don't know why i had not used it before but uh, i actually found it good and because back in the office uh, when we are physically present, I'm so used to my whiteboard and I love it. I just love drawing stuff on the whiteboard and I feel that it gives me a lot more clarity when I draw things and it explains a lot to myself and then 
I'm able to explain that to others as required. And yeah. now, how do you do it virtually? So yesterday, I started off using whiteboard because I was I was in a Teams call with one of my colleagues, and I actually wanted to draw stuff on it. And I absolutely loved it. I didn't even know that you can add uh, notes and sticky notes and whatnot and stuff like that. It's it's looks pretty cool. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to make a, a quick video tutorial on how to use, uh, you know, Microsoft Whiteboard and publish that in the next week or so. Um, but even uh, you know, if you, you know, I know you're a Surface Pro user. Uh, you've got a Surface laptop, right? And uh, because it's got the yes. touch, I've got a I've got a Dell here XPS. It's a touch screen as well. I, I even went and bought this stylus. Uh, to conduct the meetings oh, wow. where I can actually go and, uh, and and actually draw on the actual laptop and and people can actually see uh, that interactivity going on. They can see me drawing and they can actually collaborate as well. Amazing. Yeah. 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 It's amazing, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I'm absolutely loving it. I, I used it for something else this morning too because uh, it's 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 making me feel that. Um, it's it's how should I put it? It's I'm not missing out much on the physical whiteboard if I can put it that way. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and it's also a back free flowing back. canvas as well, so uh, you don't need to erase anything. You can just keep on scrolling, uh, panning, and 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 keep keep drawing on it, uh, and and have a snapshot of that. For example, on from the workshops, as we've actually conducted the workshops, we've took a lot of notes. Uh, I've I, I, like you know yeah. I was putting you know, agenda items, putting a lot of sticky notes on things. And my project manager actually reached out to me and said, hey, Jack, can you actually send me a, a snapshot of that whiteboard because the client really liked it? And 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 now we were able to have a have a, a have what you call um, a, a record of what we've discussed. And she was able to put meeting minutes and things like that uh, quite easily nice. uh, based on that. Awesome. Uh, so that's actually good. Uh, so thanks, thanks for sharing that tip on Microsoft Whiteboard, um, and also sharing your uh, thoughts on you know your experiences on how to be productive while working remotely as well, right? So for me, um, I, I I I swear by Microsoft Planner. So Microsoft yeah. Planner is 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 been amazing. You know, yes, Teams actually pro, you know, allows you to be online. You uh, you can chat and all of that functionality. But Microsoft Planner is the godsend for me in terms of staying on 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 the path and 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 actually delivering the stuff that you know we've agreed on. So if if mm. a task is not on Microsoft Planner, it doesn't exist for me. Right, uh, and and I put everything in there. Even even the even the way where you can actually flag an email, or if a if you are working across multiple projects, um, and if someone's actually assigned a task for you, it comes up in your Microsoft To Do. You know the the uh, the new version of Wonder List, for example. Um, you know that's you know the task management while you're working away is 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 real. Um, uh, a productivity productivity hack for me. You know, if if you guys are not using Microsoft Planner now, uh, I highly encourage you to check it out. Yeah, yeah. No, is that to me? No, we guys are using it. Yes. No, 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 <laughs> no. I'm just just saying for for you know yes, uh, the yes. listeners of uh, uh, the listeners of yeah, uh, so, yes, of I more. highly recommend it. We've been yeah. using it and it does work a treat. And um, I, I I absolutely love it. Um, and apart from these, I also have got a few. Uh, power apps that I developed for my own use uh, because there were certain things that didn't quite work for me the way I would want, I, which I obviously don't want to get into that area right now in this call or in this podcast, but that will keep this for another day. So I decided I need to solve that problem and I went ahead and developed a couple of power apps to basically help me out with that. I'm definitely very keen to talk about that on another episode. Sure, man. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, so by the way, guys, uh, Chenda has agreed uh, to come on the show uh, on this podcast, uh, not just this time. We actually have plans to conduct a series of uh, podcast episodes uh, talking about remote work, talking about this, uh, you know, Office 365 apps and how to say, how to stay secure when you're working remotely and and few other things. We all, we also have plans to bring in other experts in the area of security and and so to to come and have a chat with us as well. So uh, that's why Chenda keeps saying that we'll actually touch base on and we go deep, we'll, we we will go deep into some of these topics that we're touching today uh, in the subsequent episode. So if you haven't subscribed to the show, um, please do subscribe and we'll actually be releasing more 
uh, thanks, thanks, Chanda. We, we'll be releasing more episodes down the track. So that's my plug for my own uh, show. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, okay. that's that's actually good. But I actually one thing I forgot though, uh, Chanda, regarding uh, whiteboard. That's something that I found out uh, this week when I was setting up this yeah. workshops for the client. Is unfortunately Microsoft Whiteboard doesn't actually allow you to have that collaboration going outside your uh, organization. You know they can right. they can they can see what you're doing, but they can't really uh, draw on the whiteboard. So it doesn't allow external sharing at this All stage. Right. Okay, got it. Okay, so, right. Okay, so that's no. I'm just a beginner in that. I've only used it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yesterday and today. Yeah, so even even then, uh, even though it doesn't do the external sharing, you know, it's still something uh, where the client has got that visibility and you know is able to you know interact uh, yeah. and and see what's happening uh, from a from a conceptual point of view where we actually draw everything up uh, and and create notes and things like that. It's quite good. Uh, it's so. Uh, I, th I think let's let's start wrapping it up. Uh, you, you know the the episode for for today. But as we said, we'll 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 uh, uh, we'll come back and 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 discuss the 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 points that we've touched base uh, today in more detail in the subsequent episodes. Right before uh, as we uh, as we're going to wrap up, uh, why don't you share some of your productivity tips uh, uh, in using Office three sixty five tools? Um, well, uh, one of the first things is. Um, if you aren't using Teams, definitely you should be using Teams. It's amazing. Um, and also things like um, Planner, yes, no doubt. And I'm now beginning to become a fan of Microsoft Whiteboard. I seem to love it. And uh, of course, did I mention OneNote already? OneNote, yes, yeah. for sure. Um, I use that big time. And um, Find things that works for you. And you know, when I say that, just don't go and start using these apps just because someone told you. Try, try to find something that actually works for you. And I'm pretty sure with the suite of tools and apps that Microsoft has given and given to us, I'm pretty sure uh, most of them would definitely suit your requirements. And um, also from, I know I, I digressed a bit, but from a productivity perspective. Um, look, we're all going to be busy with work. We're all busy at all times. Yes, but I highly recommend pull out a couple of minutes, maybe five, 10 minutes, make a quick call to one of your colleagues, chat with them. It doesn't have to be about work. Just talk to them because that yeah. might make a huge difference. And uh, maybe they are in need of it and they may not have Vo being vocal about it, but it's worthwhile just touching base. If it's not your colleague, your team member, even talk to a client, th they would definitely appreciate. I'm pretty sure with, uh, there are there are a lot of people out there who are wanting to actually talk about what's going on around yeah. and then at least like, like a listener. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, thanks for that. Um, I, I want to share some some productivity tips from my side, okay. especially around remote work. Yes, you have all this technology, like you said, like you said, Chanda. Um, we have a whole bunch of applications on, at our fingertips. You know, don't get overwhelmed with all these applications. You know, right. you don't need to really use all of them. Uh, there's there's n number of ways how you could actually use to make them fit to your workflow. Yeah, like Chanda said, pick one. Uh, or two, you try it out, see how it actually fits to uh, you know in your workflow, and then use them, and 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 then start to slowly, gradually, um, you know, build on 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 that productivity workflow for you. Uh, don't try and boil the ocean on day one, uh, but you know, take it small, take it slowly, and then you you'll you'll start to start to embrace this Office 365 uh, apps apps as well. This is what I actually preach in my uh, you know the change management user adoption um, guides uh, with my clients. By the way, um, I. I one one other productivity tip to be to be real productive uh, is actually don't be at your screen all the time, okay? Uh, don't don't be that uh, person who's working from 6 a.m. in the morning till say 9 a.m. in the, uh, 9 p.m. in the night, right? Um, uh, you you'll get really burned out very quickly. So what I do, especially working from home, you don't you can't keep track of things. There's no uh, colleague to come and you know ask you for a coffee or things like that. So what I do is 
I actually go out and go for a walk or if if you're not allowed to go for a walk some things uh, with all the lockdown uh just go and stand in the sun go and stand in your in your backyard or in your front front yard just take a small stroll in your backyard or in your front yard if you okay. if you're working in a uh, if you if you live in an apartment go stand in a balcony right or just go downstairs and just have that like get some sun uh and then it'll it'll refreshes you to come back and be more productive that's what i've been that's finding in myself to it. to really uh boost my uh you know motivation to motivate my to motivate myself and to be more productive i agree i i i can't uh, uh stress enough about the last tip that you just gave i totally love it because um well in my office right now i've got a huge window right in front of me and um in fact i remember even taking a selfie yesterday when the sunlight was so bright and on my face and i could not even see my screen that was like a magical moment for me yeah yeah just remember to keep uh, put your sunscreen on the you remember you're in australia so <laughs> so uh thanks janda so as we promised we'll we'll uh, definitely touch base and and do more recordings uh, we'll where we will actually talk about information security you know crisis management how to put all these apps together and and support your users how to keep your uh, employees on bo- uh, you know informed on 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 the ever changing yeah. um policies or you know supporting them while working in isolation and things like that. we'll talk more about that in in the coming episodes but chenda thanks so much man um thank you so much and i think Don't probably we should uh, we should probably end this episode by uh, queuing in a ar rahman beat what do you think or maybe i'll get a strike uh, uh, from youtube for using a romance music so let's see i i i'll see if i can get a a a royalty you free fine. you should be fine <laughs> you're going to take yeah, care of me right you can if a rahman raises a, a strike against me uh, and say uh, i by the way i've got chandar on the call <laughs> and then you'll say okay that's fine i don't think don't worry he'll be fine <laughs> Thanks man thanks Chandra thanks you for that should uh, end with a selfie i think it's been one of uh, one of the finest podcasts oh man sure sure great <laughs> all right jack thank you so much thanks buddy see you later see ya